If you want a true adventure bike that you can also properly take off-road and could theoretically really travel the world with, your options were kind of in the past the Honda CRF or the Himalayan 411. The, the Himalayan 411 is in the price range of 4,000 euros but is quite heavy and the Honda CRF in its ready package can go up to seven grand. Enter the Vogue or Vogue, the, the, the internet is kind of divided on how to pronounce this. The Vogue Rally 300. This bike comes in for 4,600 bucks. And let's see what it can offer for that because I think this could actually be for your average budget adventurer traveler who really wants to get his stuff done on, the, uh, on a budget, the best option in the new market. Because this motorcycle comes with basically everything that you would need. It has a single cylinder engine with 29 horsepower and 25 newton meters. Uh, it has 210 millimeters of suspension travel and weighs 158 kilos with all the liquids inside. And also the range at almost 340 kilometers with a fuel consumption of 3.2 liters per 100 kilometers is really impressive. So let's see if this bike can be a worthy contender for the cheapest possible light ADV bike to actually go around the world. Let's hear a bit from the owner of this motorcycle what he has changed on the bike from Felix um, about his Vogue 300 Rally. Okay, so that's my um, Vogue 300 Rally. I just got it about a week ago and now I'm going to show you what I changed on it, what you don't have to change and basically um, the way it comes. So the first thing I, ex I changed on this bike is basically um, these um, hand guards here because the standard ones are just coming in plastic and it's just a thin layer of plastic so I've replaced these because you have like real metal on it. And yeah, well basically that's kind of it what you have to change on this bike if you want to take a touring on a little adventure because um, the um, luggage rack comes as standard. You got your rally foot packs, you got an engine guard on it, and a huge like windshield. So pretty much everything in one package. As you've pretty much already heard, this bike comes with kind of the full package. So let's see how it can sit on the bike. And for me at 6'5 or 1 meter and 96 centimeters, it is incredibly comfortable. Like this bike is perfect for my size. Like it fits absolutely ideal. Only problem is, I'm a bit taller than the average person. So maybe if you're not as tall, this could get quite difficult. As it has a seat height of 91 centimeters and five millimeters. Um, and for me, it's here really all right. I also have a slight bend in the knee and can really flat foot the bike. But uh, you have to see if it fits for your size. So before you buy one of these, definitely sit on it at the dealership and see if this works because um, this fits perfectly for me, but I don't think it will fit perfectly for most people. All in all, I can already tell that the suspension is quite soft, but it's not too soft. It's like when I usually sit on an Enduro, I sit down on it and it instantly just sags down. And this is not the case here. This feels like it should be, basically. So yeah, let's take the bike on the road and see how it rides. One thing I instantly have to say, the sound of this bike is quite impressive. For this being a stock exhaust, it sounds really good. So instantly here's some cobblestone where we can see how the suspension does. And the suspension eats this up quite well. But we have some big potholes here and the suspension really travels fine over that. I could also completely stay sitting down here. Also here now if I go again on the on this, even when sitting, this is all fine. Let's see how the bike goes where so it goes a bit quicker over As you can see, it goes over this cobblestone here and also the gravel really fine. Also the, the, the gears are quite short, so you can really use the 26 horsepower. We're now here on the road and um, I already read some articles about the bike and many people complained about the tires, but I have to say the tires are are okay. 
Um, they they did the gravel all right, and also when braking, they were really grippy in the uh, on the um, gravel road. And here on the asphalt, they they feel okay. You don't have this constant like you don't hear them and you don't feel the knobbiness of them. Um, the only thing that we now still have to see, where I probably will never fully trust Chinese tires, is um, how the rubber mixture is, because. Uh, sometimes it can be the case that they um, don't have the best grip and you don't feel like you can trust them fully especially when it comes to like temperatures around 10 degrees and of course we we did not fully put them through the worst of it which would be mud and stuff I have to say here now in the small speeds in in town you can feel that the, uh, that the very short gears really make the 29 horsepower a bit more like it, it feels okay it's not going to blow your socks off of course but if you would expect that you wouldn't watch this video i guess it it does all right like here like you can you can feel the bike getting going and if you would now drive this in your local city uh through traffic you would uh be able to quickly zap around but of course you have to keep in mind that it's uh 29 horsepower but still this this goes this goes yeah for 29 horsepower, this feels good. It definitely feels better than the Himalayan 411 engine. Of course, the Himalayan engine then has this tractor-like capability that you can kind of chug along at the lowest RPM up a mountain. Uh, with this having a bit less newt meters, I, I don't think that that will be the case. Yeah, and here I'm now passing my interceptor and we're taking this bike how fast it can go, basically. And you start to feel the vibration in your butt, basically. And you, you, you feel the 21 inch front wheel, which is, you know, it's unavoidable. It does okay. It does okay. And for travel, this does, uh, yeah. And at the same time with doing those things here okay for a general trip, um, this thing would probably be able to handle quite a lot of tough off-road as well. Uh, which we now cannot test as this bike is new and n that is not legal here in Germany But I'm pretty sure this bike would do quite well, especially in in the hands of someone with average skills I, I don't feel like you can feel much of a difference to other similarly weighted Enduros Let's quickly jump this curb here <sighs> Yeah Suspension does what it's supposed to but one thing I have to say, the suspension feels soft and yes, it dives in, but it doesn't dive in as much. Uh, for context, I am 100 kilos and I have a backpack on and motorcycle gear. So we're probably talking 120 kilos here. And for that, the, the suspension really holds up fine. Like it's, um, it's, it doesn't dive in too much. It dives in how an Enduro should, but, um, it it doesn't suffer under my weight which i really like as i feel like that can be a a bit of an issue sometimes with bikes like this and also you can add a ton of weight to this you can add i think 340 kilos um so 340 kilos is what the bike can carry in total one thing i almost forgot this windshield is quite small but it does its job really well like it's narrow but it's like quite high and the center of my body doesn't get any wind of course my head and my shoulders definitely are getting some but it feels nice and comfortable it's all fine one thing that has to be said that's negative about how the bike rides uh the front brake requires quite a lot of hand action and also brakes a bit insufficiently i don't know like the the bike is allowed to carry quite a lot of weight and if you're going down some steep mountain somewhere in Italy and have a passenger on the back or a lot of luggage and you have been braking for some time and then you need to really brake, could be a bit shit. But the rear brake is really good. The rear brake is really good. That That is what I have to say, definitely. The rear brake is sharp and nice. So let's give it the beans a bit now that we're going here. The bike doesn't have any traction control, so if you want to get your tires spinning, you can do that. But of course, when going, you don't have enough power. But yeah, it's basically built in traction control through lack of power. 
And for everyone who thinks that this is just a little slight cobblestone, this is really bad cobblestone. And it's still, without me standing up here, just does the job fine. And if I'm now standing up here, let's talk a bit about the, the, the figure of standing on the bike. It feels okay. Um, maybe I would need to raise the handlebars, but apart from that... So, after all, now to talk about the bike. Here a bit uncomfortable on the ground as we didn't find any chairs. But yeah, the Voge or Voji 300 Rally. Um, we now took the bike through the paces of what a normal travel day would most likely look like. We kind of had to skip on the hard enduro stuff as we cannot do that here and the bike is quite new. So, um, but all in all, I think we have gotten a really good picture of the bike. And I have to say, I am very convinced this is a really good motorcycle. Also for the money, like the, the price of I think 4,600 for shipping is you can pick him up for four and a half basically yeah you can pick him up for four and a half and that is incredible it's really incredible also if you look at the prices of other motorbikes um, for example if you now would have a look at something like the Honda CRF rally yeah, like, you're, you're looking at basically if you're looking for the new rally because you have to compare new to new it's just to be fair yeah it's it's double um, you, yeah, yeah you, if you want to make it like we were earlier talking and if you want to make it travel ready yeah, then um, it's even more. You, you, you're missing the uh, engine guard. Yeah. You're missing the um, luggage rack. Yeah. Um, and these things you have to put into like the price and you have to spend that extra. Yeah, of course. So then that would, with the Honda, be on top. And also this motorbike, that is especially for my taller viewers, is really <laughs> well fitting for tall people. Like this is a, a Chinese made bike. I don't know what they were thinking because this feels like target audience, Netherlands and Norway because if you are above uh, 1 meter 90 and around 100 kilos, this is a really good bike. The suspension feels amazing. Like uh, it doesn't like sink in so low. Like if you would sit on the Honda, the Honda feels like it's basically sinking in completely. Um, and for me, if I would uh, take the Honda, I would have to put a different suspension into yep, it. Me as well. Like I don't know what they were thinking target demographic wise, but if you're a tall dude, this is the bike for you. This is perfect. And if you consider then, of course, spending the money on crash protection, then the... Like the, um, the guards, because yeah. these are like, yeah. they are light plastic as well. So yeah. you need this. This one is like 160 bucks. Um, this one, depending on where you get it, at least like 150 to 200. Yeah. Maybe even more and the luggage rack but, probably but it as well. already comes in a cheaper version with the bike and if you would put that onto the Honda yeah. you would spend a lot of money also the engine protection is already there and you would need suspension so the and Honda you got your rally foot packs yeah that's in there too so oh, I, I think the Honda has them too but yeah, yeah. but I, I would say if you if you get the Honda properly trip ready you would spend 10 grand most likely I mean, um, you, you could just say I'm just going to skip on a couple of things, but... Um, yeah, at, at the end of it, it's probably like you, you buy the bike for 7,000 bucks, but you still need to do a lot of things yeah, for if, it to be actually true. Yeah, if you can find already. one for, for seven, like brand new. Yeah, brand new for seven. And this is 4.6. And if you would want to do like a trip to somewhere like, like to Cape Town, if you, for the price of getting the Honda and getting the Honda trip ready, you can do the whole trip and buy this bike. And I think that's a pretty unbeatable argument. And speaking of trips like that, uh, of course it's a Chinese bike. And you always have to be a bit, nah, Chinese bikes, it's, it's a bit of a thing in the motorcycle community. But I have to say, um, if you actually look at traveling with those bikes, uh, the dealerships that can help you if you have problems with the engine are kind of on all continents quite common. Uh, on the African continent and all the different countries you have quite a lot of dealerships you have in Asia you have in Latin America I think the only problem where you would here in Europe as well yeah the you only guys are basically in Italy Spain France you're, you're yeah. Germany Netherlands you're absolutely the, fine the only problem where you would run into is probably North America I, I don't see them having many dealers in North America I, I would say anywhere except for Mexico yeah but Canada and and the US is probably going to be a, a bit difficult um, a bit finding, difficult, finding yeah. a specialized dealer for that uh, yeah so basically it's it's a four stroke engine it's got a single cylinder 300 cc so uh, I mean it's a basic four stroke engine so a good mechanic for who, who, who works on bikes will be able to fix yeah many things on it yeah, but electronically 
Um, I mean, I've showed you already, we, we took up the seed and um, the in injection and the ignition system is made by Bosch. So Yeah, so, so that's quite good. And uh, the only thing is y you want to, of course, keep your warranty as it's like two years of warranty. And if you would buy this and do a trip on it, like this is a bike that I would be comfortable on doing a really, really big motorcycle trip with that is more gravel road and off-road focused. Of course, we now were not really able to put it completely through the paces of how it is to in like proper, proper off-road. Um, but I don't think there will be any big surprises, but still cannot say too much about that. Um, all, all from the vibration side of things. Uh, there could be the possibility that parts on this motorcycle rattle themselves loose, similar to the issues that the Royal Enfield Himalayan 411 had. But I cannot say if that happens as the bike is just not long enough on the market for that. Probably stuff like broken frames like you had at the launch of the 411 Himalayan are not going to be an issue with this as the bike is already on the market for six months here in Europe. Uh, maybe a bit longer. Maybe depends, a bit longer. Depends on which country. Yeah, yeah, and you haven't seen them on Reddit yet, so... I would say yeah, you, you're you should, good. You should be good there. You, sh you should be good there. Of course, with stuff rattling itself loose over time, I cannot say that. No one can say it yet, as the bike is just not on the market long enough yeah. for that. And no one took um, it like up to twenty thousand on the odometer, so yeah, or even more. Yeah. So. Talking about reliability, uh, the engine you already uh, mentioned. Uh, the engine that is made by Vogue is made by a company that also makes the engine for B uh, engines for BMW. Yeah. And they are also in a collaboration with Kawasaki for the KLX engine. And the, the KLX engine has the same amount of bore and the same amount of CC. And um, probably a lot of similar parts have been used here. And also, if they can do a decent engine multiple times, I don't think they're going to fuck it up here. So I would say... Yeah, it's, it's highly unlikely that that happens. Unlikely. And as you already said, it's, it, they make engines for BMW. Yeah. Um, which is like top of the line motorcycle brand. So you yeah. only have to cut in the same range. Basically, yeah. these are the two top dogs when it comes to pricing and, and what is there, which yeah. is going to be offered. So um, if they would be a bad company, which would do shitty quality and people would stop yeah. buying Ducati or BMW, yeah. they would look for a different supplier. And even if the bike wouldn't be the most reliable, um, you have a good dealer network, so you can always get work done on it in the two years of the uh, warranty. And if you're basically just looking for a bike to do a trip with, I would say it doesn't get much better than this as the, the price is just very low. You have, of course, some complaints, uh, but apart from that, not much to critique, critique here. Of course, if you are a smaller dude, then the bike is probably a bit uh, too, too big. Yeah. But apart from that, it's all good. Yeah, one thing that is kind of a thing of taste is how the dash looks with uh, there's no... Um, fuel meter but therefore you have a gear indicator and you have a very simple to use uh, kilometer counter that is just one button so you can just count the kilometers until you need to fill up on the gas station and speaking of actually traveling the the service intervals are like 10,000 kilometers yeah, for, for like the big service inspection that's like 10,000 yeah then you have like there's in, in the German service manual there you have like small services but it depends on your importer I mean they could yeah. say it's 2,000 15,000 yes yeah. they are the people responsible for the warranty which will have to reimburse you if your bike breaks so yeah um, they can do whatever but i ten ten thousand for like a normal inspection um yeah it's, it's kind of good for like single cylinder bike um of course you always have to keep in mind that um if you're doing kind of like adventure travel where you uh, have probably a lot of dust you have like stuff in the air filter yeah um all of that stuff so um i would say all all pretty good bike and if I would um, have to go somewhere on a motorcycle for a very long trip with a dual sport I would probably pick this bike as it's just the cheapest and you can with the rest that you would normally spend on something like the Honda you can just do a big trip instead and um, at the end of it you're you're planning to do a big motorcycle trip if you are looking into a bike like that so spending too much money on on the bike wouldn't be advisable as you will probably not have much use for a bike like that in your home country like for us here in yeah, germany I mean, yeah you, you can i mean you can do the uh, like very small roads where it's very yeah. rural you, you you can do because this is fun you would never do that on, on like your interceptor or like any i mean i do that on my interceptor because it, i'm but, nuts but, but, you, yeah. but you do different things so yeah um, most people wouldn't take like heavier like naked bikes super sports you don't yeah. see these areas i've seen so many places in a short time of time span where i've never been before at all 
yeah. um, just because you take the narrow roads, which you have a lot of potholes in them, because the suspension just, just just takes it and you don't care about it, because um, you don't you don't feel it that much. Yeah, the point you don't care about it is actually a really good one, as if you do a trip like this, you're basically just like ruining a bike. Not not really, but like you're doing a lot of things that your motorcycle will not thank you for. And I think the price range of four grand, yeah. I, I kind of get comfortable around three thousand bucks dropping a bike. So I kind of have to extend my, my comfort zone about 1,600 bucks. But this one is brand um, new, so... Yeah, 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 so I think we're pretty much good here. Um, feel free to leave your opinion on the Vogue 300 Rally in the comments. And also, next Sunday, the big motorcycle surf film is going to drop. So please be excited about that. And feel free to subscribe and see you soon on the Free Miles MC.